let's just get started. Yep, sounds good. Cool. So let me just give you a, a little background, like uh, why did mm -hmm. I reach out to you and uh, what's this, uh, this about? So two weeks ago, I believe uh, it was the Prometheus conference. Uh, and I yep. saw you on the stage and uh, basically it was it was very inspiring uh, to me. Uh, I, I was in the mood of uh, rediscovering uh, sort of how I got into this whole Docker Kubernetes uh, uh, dot 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 environment. And uh, basically, mm -hmm. basically two days before that, it was, uh, you know, uh, GitHub uh, came out with an article like uh, how they rebuilt their uh, uh, basically development platform and and and, mm -hmm. and and all those nice things of uh, how they made their lives better you know uh, their SRE team can focus on you know like mm -hmm. reliability and not not supporting engineers and so on and basically your talk even though it was more uh, monitoring focused it was uh, very mm -hmm. very much uh, you know uh, hitting this this exact spot it's like and and, and, it, and it's very compelling to me this this whole vision so uh, here we are thanks for thanks for joining uh, not a problem thanks uh, for having me of course and uh, can you just uh, introduce yourself and uh, your role at digital ocean uh, so my name is Sneha Nguva um, and at digital ocean I was on the uh, delivery team which is kind of the team that focuses on making uh, I guess developer experience and tooling uh, a lot easier specifically as as it comes to like delivering applications mm -hmm. uh, we kind of work we use uh, kubernetes and as well as you know monitoring and alerting solutions which is why I was at Prometheus conference kind of talking about how we've leveraged uh, Prometheus and alert manager along with our abstraction on kubernetes um, I'm currently still working a lot with monitoring but more so on the observability team which is kind of like larger scale mm -hmm. um data center wide monitoring okay sounds very cool uh you just uh, gave a, a sneak peek into your development platform if i if i'm correct it was called uh, DOCC. Uh, yes could, could you perhaps uh, just uh share a little bit more about uh, the key elements what you used uh yeah building so that? Of course. So with DOCC, uh, basically, I, the, this DOCC kind of predates me joining DigitalOcean and joining this team. And so I believe that one of my colleagues, uh, who actually also has a talk that's out okay. uh, from last year, from, um, I think from KubeCon, he had he he had worked on another project, and he noticed that there's like a very there's like a lot of I guess. I don't even know what to, like inertia or like a lot of like operational overhead in terms of creating a new service and updating a new service, especially because there's a lot of old tooling used at DigitalOcean, such as uh, Chef, or you know, I think at some point there's Ansible, and then sometimes people use Bash scripts. There's like a lot of different ways to deploy, but then especially with Chef, that he found that quite often people would spend way more time provisioning uh, virtual machines than actually deploying or updating their applications and then quite often you there was a chef person on every team who was more experienced with chef and then by the time you learned it and you would forget it when you had to actually update a cookbook or anything and so he was like you know there should be a better way to do this so in his journey he kind of proposed the creation of a delivery team that would focus on making it easier to uh, basically deploy update applications and do everything around that uh, and so that was accepted. And so then I was also hired to join the team. And then I learned that we had lever we had chosen to leverage uh, Kubernetes. Um, and I think at the time there was a consideration of other container mm -hmm. orchestration platforms as well. And in fact, we do use other things at DigitalOcean, but in terms of like long running services, which is what the initial aim was for, we felt that Kubernetes was much better. It had a really good community. Um, it was, you know, Google has devoted a lot of resources to it. I decided to go with Kubernetes. Um, and in terms of DOCC, we, if you look at kubectl and like look at Kubernetes, there's a, it's very feature rich. There's a lot of primitives and there's a lot of things you could do. So I think the concern was that just exposing kubectl would perhaps still not really help in terms of developer experience. So we wanted to kind of build on top of it, make it our own. And then mm -hmm. ultimately, as I mentioned in my talk, we also added some features in terms of alerting and monitoring. So, so DOCC is basically an abstraction layer on top of Kubernetes. Um, we basic users use a CLI to interact with like a small service that uses an API to communicate with Kubernetes and create and destroy applications. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, sounds very cool. There are a lot of things I could uh, I could jump on, like uh, yeah. like like, like <laughs> your uh, previous experience with Chef and and so on. Uh, we had yeah. somewhat similar experiences when we tried uh, developers to write Ansible scripting. Uh, some got the hang of it. Some were just yeah, whatever. I just want my service uh, running <laughs> in the cloud. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, uh, would you be able to showcase this little uh, tool to us? Um, I I mean I suppose I can. Uh, hold on. I actually, mm -hmm. I think I'm, I mean, the concert, I recently reset my laptop okay. and I may have, so on the new team, actually, uh, we, we primarily work with monitoring and alerting and less, I don't know if I have it running per se, but okay. I can okay. show you some, uh, examples. Okay. That, that, that's also like. fine. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Be, give me, yep. Yeah. Just, just go, go and, ahead and, uh, and, and, and find <laughs> the things you want to find. Yes. Yeah, I can definitely showcase some pretty good examples. So yeah, so essentially what would happen uh, to deploy an application on DOCC is that users would, you know, they would just write their application in whatever language they want. Um, they would Dockerize it. And I think that part's like pretty standard, you know, whether you're, like, you're using DOCC or like whatever like container orchestration platform. So once you Dockerize it, then all DOCC is, is you kind of specify which image you're using, which ports you want to expose, if you want metrics, uh, or if you want to leverage alerts. And then in our case, uh, for in terms of the monitoring uh, aspect, we also have users indicate um, where they would like to receive their alerts, mm -hmm. and then like which metrics on point would like to be scraped. And that is something that we added, which is actually not really in Kubernetes, but we added it as a feature uh, for our, I guess, layer on top. Okay, so so basically, cube control was very feature heavy and so on, maybe confusing to developers. And you have a subset of maybe create a service, like jump into the logs, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and, and and all these uh, day to day day things. Okay, yep. that that's that sounds sounds uh, very cool yeah. actually. And then I think re recently, actually, the earlier this year, we also chose to expose the jobs feature and then also tweak that a little bit. Uh, for like our particular use case for the different teams that use uh, things like cron jobs at Dio. Okay, okay. So so basically, developers write their Docker files. Do they have to define mm -hmm. like a K Kubernetes service manifest? Uh, like, a... it's a, yeah, it's a very similar concept. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than using YAML, we're just mm -hmm. using a JSON. So okay, it's okay. essentially a very similar concept, but just a little different. In fact, okay. let me give you an example. Okay. Okay, I think my, this is actually from my colleagues. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, awesome. So this is actually from my colleagues talk. So if we skip down, uh, yeah, here's a very simple example of what one of these manifests might look like. Uh, you know, you specify the name. Mm -hmm. You can add, so I guess something else that's very important to indicate is that in the Kubernetes world, you actually, like one of the smallest primitives is called a, oh, whoops, is called a pod, mm -hmm. which con consists of multiple containers mm -hmm. that are kind of deployed alongside each other and can uh, communicate with each other, in our case, over lo local host. So in this, per in this particular application, we have only a single container, mm -hmm. which is the KubeCon container, and we're specifying our image and our image tag. Then we're also specifying uh, who the maintainer is, and that's that's something that's also important because I think, mm -hmm. um, especially when you are at a company, uh, of like a larger company, there's you know, and you're moving to a microservices architecture, there's like hundreds, if yeah. not thousands, of services, mm -hmm. and especially if you have like a central ops team or an SRE team or whatnot, it's hard to know who is responsible for a service if they get paged, and so we with this like opinionated manifest file mm -hmm. and like the requirement that people have to indicate their maintainer that helps a lot in terms of uh, I guess discovery of who is responsible for uh, what uh, service uh, absolutely absolutely yeah mm -hmm. um, and then here let me oh yeah and then here's an example of how you <laughs> might actually expose a service and indicate which port is there anything particular that you would want to see in terms of this um, so so basically if you just show me like what uh, files developers have to write and uh, maybe what commands they have to execute and basically what what's the end user experience so so like uh, mm -hmm. co compared to before when there were all the chef scripts and everything we sort of all know that or live that uh, era yeah and uh, yep. just and basically just uh, showcasing this JSON file I think it's it's very valuable it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's it's basically 
what I found as well that like these YAML files are most yeah. mostly the same. We just copy paste. Yep. Uh, and it's as I see in this JSON, it's only the the, the the pieces that actually change. So so you strip it down to to make it more straightforward, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. So, oh, let me stop presenting mm -hmm. this real quick. So yeah, so essentially we've kind of, uh, so with what I just showcased, mm -hmm. we essentially stripped down a lot of features. Mm -hmm. um, we exposed a couple of new things and then all users have to do is that after they, after, you know, the entire dockerization component that, you know, which is like standard if you're mm -hmm. working with containers perhaps, mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe you're using not Docker and something else, regardless, mm -hmm. that component is like standard. So once yep. you actually have your image and your image is in your repository, uh, you then define this manifest file and all yep. you do with the CLI tool is do a uh, DOCC deploy. And that's okay. pretty much all there is to it. Okay, okay. A DOCC deploy and you indicate your manifest file. Okay. Oh, and then I, I suppose something else that's uh, also kind of important to, to indicate is that there are numerous Kubernetes clusters at DigitalOcean. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have multiple regions and multiple data centers all around the world. Mm -hmm. And so some, you know, naturally there's a lot of services that will run in all of these regions. So as a result, we actually have kind of this multi-context component. Mm -hmm. So let me actually see if I do have, uh, I checked, it turns out I actually did install it. So, mm -hmm. so we're good to go. So cool. basically, um, so one thing that you know we would be able to do is mm -hmm. uh, switch contexts. Mm -hmm. So, right? Uh, oh, what the heck? Oh, okay. So we can specify a particular context. Oh, hold on. And you know, like I don't know how much of this I can share, but you can basically just specify which mm -hmm. cluster you want to look at. Uh -huh. So, like maybe you want to look at this. Uh, what? That's embarrassing. <laughs> no. Well, a lot of these, okay, a lot of <laughs> components of this uh, tool changed since I stopped being on this team. And like, they, I think no, it's, it's, some... <laughs> it's, 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 it's quite all right. I think if, if you just show me uh, just one more time the, yeah. the, the help, I think that uh, gives away that a might lot. Be, yeah. yeah, that might be better. Yeah, yeah it's, I, I, I know, you know, de demos is the hardest part of everything. So I know, live, like, never do live demos, <laughs> never, as they never say. Ever, or, or record it and then just play it. <laughs> No, no. So yeah. Okay. Just, uh, just can, can you? So, yeah, yeah. So sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh yeah. No worries. I mean, did you have a specific uh, question? No, I'm. I'm just uh, scanning through the the available commands. Completion. That that's actually very nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Delete. Deploy. Deploy status. Yep, okay. Status. That was okay, nice. Okay. So so basically, you like uh, uh, went for one deployment technique, and then this deploy deploy status is. Uh, Yes, yes. And I think the deploy, so we added, you know, a couple of features. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a lot of what we've built is, you know, there's the old adage that if you mm -hmm. build it, people won't necessarily come. And yep. we take that quite seriously uh, at DigitalOcean. So I think that a lot of these features, I mean, so initially we, there, we could, uh, when I joined the team, they had built like a very early alpha version of DOCC. Mm -hmm. And then they actually went out, I think our manager and one other person, my colleague, uh, Mac B, kind of went out and spoke to all the other teams got a lot of feedback, did like a very extensive survey and mm -hmm. went through the entire survey, saw which features were, you know, most requested or most appreciated. And then also maybe watched users like interact with the tooling and then uh, decided which features to work on. So deploy status, for example, mm -hmm. is something that was definitely user requested, yep. I think, because a lot of people like to use DOCC within whatever continuous integration mm -hmm. tooling and whatnot. So it was very helpful to have uh, that. Yep. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, and then I guess, is there any, oh, in events, you know, uh, there's obviously, like, there's kubectl events. So we're kind of <laughs> yeah, actually yeah. aggregating a couple, yep. like, events from there yeah, 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 and yeah. From, from some other locations, I believe, uh, in order to generate that. Okay. So basically, I, I believe I have like, a, you know, uh, aliases for, for most of these, uh, just, just based, mm -hmm. on, based on kubectl. So I, I think it's, I think it's a valid need to just, you know, have your, uh, have your tool. Uh, yep. tool set just tailored for your needs. So yeah, yeah, like changing namespaces, for example, I have just a little alias in my, my bash uh, mm -hmm. config. So it's, it's very similar, but uh, you know, I, <laughs> I try to do myself, but I, I, I definitely see the value in this and, and, and it's super cool. So, so how did developers react to it or how was the adoption process? Uh, 
Yeah, so I think the adoption here, let me stop for something. So I think the adoption process went fairly well. Mm-hmm. I think there was a huge amount of, uh, you know, initial effort mm-hmm. put in but I uh, by uh, a couple of my teammates. But I think on top of that, the fact that users took to it so readily mm-hmm. just indicated that, you know, there, there was definitely a need for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think like one of the most remarkable things perhaps is we had a hackathon, I believe, uh, mm-hmm. towards the end of last year. And during that hackathon, I think people deployed some like 100 to 200 odd applications on our different Kubernetes clusters fairly seamlessly. Mm-hmm. And then I think even like maybe two or three weeks ago, I, I remember someone else within the company mentioning that like the moment from when they joined the company to just uh, downloading DOCC and deploying an application mm-hmm. only took like maybe an hour at most. Yeah. That's, and that's so I think, cool, that's, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a huge change yeah. compared to the past. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, very good yeah. to hear. And, and how many developers are we talking about? Like um, tens I mean, or, think, or more, more like hundreds or? Yeah, I mean, I think the company at this point, I think it's like fairly publicly known, is probably like has 300 people okay, or so. Okay. And so we have like a fairly large engineering okay, department. Okay. So de- definitely more than 10, so okay, I would okay. say. That, 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 yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. No, I just, I'm always, uh, you know, uh, yeah. debating myself when do these uh, in-house platforms make sense and that's true i think yeah. it depends on the size yeah. I, mean, I remember we were talking about this as well like in our case we have an entire team dedicated to mm-hmm. you know kind of building on top of our clusters and then i mean the point of the delivery team is also to also build other tooling that kind of helps in terms of like the delivery uh slash developer experience mm-hmm. so i think when you have like the resources to dedicate to it or mm-hmm. when your company reaches a certain size it makes sense yeah. to actually have like an in-house process but if you simply don't have enough people then it would make sense to use some sort of third party third party service whether it be like gk or yeah, nomad yeah. or whatnot yeah make, make, makes a lot of sense cool cool mm-hmm. so so we talked about how developers reacted and they jumped on it and there was the hackathon which is Actually, I'm 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 uh, reading a very similar story in the GitHub article that they also had a hackathon and that was their their uh, way to get engineers on on the system. So so besides developers, uh, they 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 liked it very much. How did ops people react to it? Or and and, and yeah, just uh, yeah. I mean, I think they were also very happy, mm-hmm. and I think they've also been particularly happy because uh, we we kind of reached out whenever we wanted to build new features, mm-hmm. and they also requested. A few things that would kind of help them out, and I mm-hmm. and I know for certain that they're probably very happy with the fact mm-hmm. that you know uh, maintainers need to be indicated, and that we're building in alerting. Um, always makes them happy, so yeah, that's that's pretty definitely. exciting. Yeah, cool. Okay, so so this is also what I'm what I'm find, finding that like both worlds so, sort of very pleased with these efforts, and uh, you know it's it's trying to you know it's making their lives easier and stuff. Uh, were they concerned about uh, you know containers? Uh, it's a new technology, and how did this will behave in uh, production or and so on. Um, I mean, I think that's all. That's I mean, the, the concept of containers has mm-hmm. been a, around for mm-hmm. a very long time. I think mm-hmm. uh, you know since, since like the eighties or nineties, mm-hmm. but I think uh, Docker is probably mm-hmm. newer. Um, I think there's. There's always a little bit of a concern, but I think uh, we have like a pretty good security team. Mm-hmm. We have like application security, uh, and so while there were concerns, there were also definitely a lot of efforts to like to ensure that people were following best practices. And I think this is uh, definitely an ongoing process. Yeah, yeah. You know, whether it's from like security scanning of containers, making sure that you're using like proper images and not things randomly downloaded from the internet, uh, you know, following best practices, not baking in credentials yeah, into your absolutely. images, all these sorts of things. And then having your own private registry and not necessarily, you know, putting things on a public registry yeah. uh, for a company, for like company specific things. I, so I think while there's definitely concerns, not mm-hmm. just within, I think, our company, but in the industry in general, mm-hmm. I think there's also been a huge effort um, underway to that looks into like security best practices yeah. around yeah. containers. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, more and more articles are, are, are you know, concern, yeah. concerning security. And I think it's it's getting into developers' uh, heads that uh, security is, is their concern as well. It's not just an after Yes. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Cool. I, I wanted to ask, like, cost-wise, how things were, were changing, but I realized you are digital ocean, so you have servers, I guess. Well, yeah, well, yeah. So, so I saw that, and I, I remember <laughs> I, I shared that question with my colleagues, and they were like, uh, well, we haven't really calculated the run rate of our yeah. own servers. I mean, I think what they did say is that we're probably around 60 to 70% utilization of okay. all our, uh, like, Kubernetes clusters mm-hmm. in terms of, uh, like, resources. So that I can I can tell you in terms of like the actual 
run right, I am not. No, no, it's it's, sure. <laughs> it's, it's it's fine. I was like mostly like, is, does, does it go up or down? You know, yeah. there, there is this promise with containers that you. I mean, but yeah, I think in a way though, because mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need an entire virtual machine, yeah, yeah. right? And then I think, especially with Kubernetes, uh, depend like the way we've exposed our uh, CPU and memory resource limits allows for a certain bit of burstiness. So mm -hmm. I think in a way, it's also like more efficient because you, your containers could take up very little space and then expand in terms mm -hmm. of like CPU utilization as needed mm -hmm. and not necessarily use an entire virtual machine. So I would I would say that it's like probably more okay. Okay. efficient. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. probably it's, it's more efficient and stuff, but I never did the, the math yeah. myself. But, uh, yeah, yeah. It, would, it would be fun to do that yeah, though. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let me just look at my notes, I think. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. No, it's, it's, it was pretty much uh, the high level questions. That's pretty I, much. I, I, I wanted to ask, but uh, but babe, yeah, maybe maybe one, one more thing. So so I'm I'm uh, thinking of this idea of the self service developer and and of course containers and and these uh, manifests you just showcased as well and this tooling uh, adds adds a huge part to that. So so they are now able to actually launch their services. Uh, do you have some sort of uh, CI CD pipeline uh, and 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 if if you do, uh, there is this mm, newer take on, on CI/CD pipelines when you define uh, the pipeline itself as code, basically the same way, uh, mm -hmm. like like for for the infrastructure I part. Like, like uh, do you do you have this sort of? Uh... Yeah, uh, yes, we definitely have actually an entire team kind mm -hmm. of dedicated to that now, um, mm -hmm. but not it's not within uh, our GOCC platform. Okay, so okay. I think GOCC is simply for yeah, like GOCC for... is one component that you yep. could definitely leverage alongside our uh, like CI CD pipeline system. And yeah, we we've de I've definitely noticed that trend as well because uh, mm -hmm. I mean we're kind of a few trends of like concourse. In the past, I've used things like Jenkins, mm -hmm. and, which is you know. I, I've heard it described as a workhorse, but <laughs> perhaps like a little harder to use. But uh, yeah, I've definitely also noticed this trend kind of towards uh, like continuous integration described. Yeah, yeah. like I guess like, declaratively. Like code, well. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I think that combined with with these kind of uh, yeah. uh, Kubernetes manifest files and, and tooling, I think it's super yep. powerful. Cool. Uh, anything you you'd like to? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the only final thing I'd mention is uh, I think what, what's really cool about a lot of these open source tools is that, I mean, I, I remember Kelsey Hightower even mm -hmm. mentioned that the intention behind Kubernetes didn't necessarily, wasn't necessarily that people would use it like literally, but that people would build on top of it for their for their own company. So I think that's definitely what we've done here. And uh, I really am excited and hope mm -hmm. that other people end up doing the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a Lego. You pick and choose and, yeah, and build, build your own, exactly. own experience. Cool. Yep. Cool, cool. Uh, really, I, I, I was very grateful that, uh, that you could join and uh, uh, you could show a little bit of a glimpse like how, how DigitalOcean does this, uh, this cloud net native uh, thing. So it's uh, yeah. So, I'm, uh, I'm glad I got a chance to do yeah, that. Of Yay. Course. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And uh, <laughs> again, thanks. And uh, I again, your talk yep. was, I think, awesome. And uh, yeah. Thank you. I'm, gl I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Yay. Cool. And uh, <laughs> I guess that was it. And, uh, and thanks. And, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.